Welcome back. What we're doing this morning is I'm going to show you a couple different ways in which you can uh, paint your blocks if you so choose. I am using Derwent Ink Tense pencils. For this particular one I'm using Deep Rose and Green Aquamarine. I'm going to show you different ways that you can apply these pencils. This one I am just simply putting the pencil onto dry fabric. I'm just coloring it in, staying in between the lines, and just doing a sort of a light cover. Now you can get as intense as you want with this cover, and I'm going to show you a couple ways to do that. Okay, one is to go over it over and over and over again with the same color until the amount of saturation is achieved that you desire. Just remember, adding more is easy to do. Taking it off, not so much. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so what you want to do is kind of have a plan in mind. Take, take an extra piece of fabric, make a little practice sandwich, set it next to you so you can try out your colors before you actually put them onto the fabric. I know that this one I want to have kind of, right now I'm thinking kind of a little bit on the lighter side. I may change my mind. Like, like I said, you can always add more color. But one of the things that I do like to do is I do like to add shading in it. Um, is it necessary? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I am going to add my shading with this. Well, actually, I think I'm going to get um, an indigo blue. Blue tends to push things colors back into the recesses just a little bit. Now again, I'm going over this quite lightly. You can do it a little heavier if you wish. You can just layer your colors, layer them as many times as you wish. Layering the colors makes them come out, I think, more brilliant. I just, I like that. Now, if I need to sharpen my pencils, which I will often with this method, I will use a handheld sharpener. We don't want to put these pencils into an automatic pencil sharpener. It tends to break the lead down a little more. So you can see I've gone over it with the indigo and I'm going back over it one more time with the deep rows. Okay, and just coming out, again, I am just trying to add a little bit of shadow and shading, which will give it a little more three-dimensionality. Okay, and I'm going to go in a little bit again, and you can see I'm just building layers ever so slowly. Just nice and gentle. Some people don't care to do it this way. They think it's it's too time consuming. Is it time consuming? Yeah, probably more so than just laying on a whole bunch of color. Absolutely. But for me, I like the process. I enjoy it. Of course, I enjoy hand stitching too. So what does that tell you, right? Um, now, I just, I enjoyed the process of watching the layers build and getting the saturation that I want in it. And whether that be a real dark saturation or real light. What you can see on this particular one that I have some real darkly saturated areas here and I just keep getting lighter as I go out. This one also is a good example where I've got really a lot of color right here and it gradiates out into much less color as we go to the outside. And that's kind of what I'm working towards here. And we're just gonna do, I've got 
my indigo here. Oh no, this is called Lagoon. It's not indigo. I'm sorry. It's still a dark blue. And I'm going to go over it one more time with the Wild Rose. And you can see I'm doing nice, even layers, nice, even strokes on them. Okay. And we're just going to pull that color out a little bit more here. And then we're going to show you how the magic happens when we apply our fabric medium. To me, that's when it really starts coming to life. Just want to make sure I get all the way up to that line of stitching. And there we go. Awesome. Now I'm going to use my Jacquard Textile Colorless Extender. This is for natural or synthetic fabrics. It is permanent. It is washable, dry cleanable, non-fading. It will give a semi-transparent uh, glow to it and it's very soft to the touch. It's my favorite go-to fabric medium. Now I just have, you can see when I shake it up, I end up with some on the, on the uh, top of the cap. And really that's about all I do is I dip my brush ever so slightly in there. I have a chisel brush I'm working on be with, because I have a very narrow area right here. And I'm sure now you can see how things are really just coming to life here. And you'll notice it's darker than it appears when it's just been drawn on. The extender or fabric medium does darken those colors. And that's one of the reasons I do like to keep it nice and light when I'm drawing it in with a dry pencil. Okay, just kind of scrub it in a little bit. You want to stay inside of those stitched lines for sure. And you see how beautiful that's beginning to look. Don't be afraid to turn your block around. I'm not turning it because I want you to see everything I'm doing and I want you to see the results as they appear. I think it's important to get right to that line of stitching. You don't want to go over that line of stitching because you can actually pull the color into the next area if you're not careful. So just again, take your time, enjoy the journey. <laughs> Isn't this awesome? Look at that beautiful it is. Okay, and that's going to, see how that gives us a nice gradient color coming up out of that petal. I'm just going to turn it a little bit here. I want to be able to see really well where I'm going with this. And you should have more than one brush. You probably should have several different sizes depending on the size of space you're working in. There we go. Got it. Okay, so you'll see the gradient of the colors here coming out. And that, to me, is just beautiful. Now, I'm going to clean my brush off here. And what I'm going to show you next is what happens if we apply the medium first. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to apply the medium to my fabric. And you'll see I got over the top there, no problem. Okay. And you certainly can do it this way if you wish. This is going to give you um, much 
more intense colors. Now, another thing you can do is you can stick your pencil right into the medium. I have done that, and it works just fine. Okay, there we go. Got everything. Now, this isn't just saturated, okay? It's, it's wet, but it's not dripping, soaking wet. It's just wet enough that it's going to take the color off of the ink tense pencil and it's going to do it in quite an intense manner. This one I'm using green aquamarine and you'll see right off the bat how much color comes off. These are just kind of jewel tones to me this one, it's going to be harder to shade. So this one, what you're going to end up with is more of a solid, all-around color. The key here is to play with the different methods. Find the one that you like and stick to it for part of your project or all of your project. There we go. Now you can see it's getting a little dry. And I can tell it's getting a little dry because I'm seeing more pencil marks. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and lay that color down because we can always come over it with more medium. And because it's drying out a little bit, what's happening is it's not coming down, laying down nice and smooth. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this brush one more time. I'm just going to put a little bit of medium. You don't need a whole lot here to finish this out. Get it a little closer to the edges here. Come into the center, scrub that out a little bit. There we go. Beautiful jewel tones. Very brilliant. Very brilliant. These pencils are ink based as opposed to pigment based, which other pencils are pigment based. A little bit goes a long way with these Ink Tense Pencils by Derwent. There we go. That is so brilliant. We're going to go ahead and put the other side on now. And then I will just continue all the way around. And you can see I still have color on my brush. This is why if you're going from one color to another, you definitely want to wash your brush out because that ink will stay on there and it will transfer. But it doesn't matter for me at this point because I am going to use the same color on this portion of the design. There we go. Beautiful. Again, you don't need to have it where the um, medium is puddling on there. You just want it wet. There we go. And we're going to get the green aquamarine again. And 
it doesn't matter which side you start on. And see just how much color you can lay down and how quickly you can do it. Our fabric has um, somewhat of a pattern to it, so of course what you want to do is you want to make sure that you get as much on as you need to, and then we're going to come back and smooth it with our brush, and we're going to have some medium on our brush to smooth it out with. But you can see just how quickly we can lay that color down when the surface of our fabric is wet. So here we go. Now I'm just going to fill in right up to that line of stitching. And you'll see how nicely these, this ink moves around on the surface of our fabric. This is washable dry cleanable. It's going to remain soft. Our colors will not fade. I'm going to come up just a little bit here. I want to get that point. And this is where you really want to take your time. We'll turn it around here. There we go. Nice and tight into the stitching. If your extender looks a little milky on top, it's because it is. It will dry clear. And basically, I just kind of move it around until it's pretty even everywhere. And you see that I can actually move the color around a little bit as well. There we go. So that is the two methods of getting your color onto your block. I want you to feel free to experiment. Feel free to mix colors. You can. It's not difficult. Have it as vivid and bright or as subdued as you like. As I showed you here, this is a very vivid block. This one has a mix of darks and lights. This one is kind of a gradient mix. This one just has different colors in it, and, and I really like that a lot. Here again, there's just some different colors. This one is more monochromatic, and you'll see what I did was I've put the lower petals coming out darker, which simulates them being further away. And here I just started dark and got out to light. Same color family, basically. So, give it a try if you'd like. I hope you do. I hope you post pictures for me. I'd love to see what you're doing. Don't forget to comment, share, and like, <laughs> and subscribe. That's so important to me. I'd like to know that you are enjoying the content that I'm presenting. And we will meet again. Until then, let's quilt.